kill me now. Oh, come on. I've been rubbing this thing all afternoon and the genie still won't come out of it. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or... Wait a minute. Oh, wait, this is a teapot, not a magic lamp. Poop. It's night number 10 of the 11 nights of Halloween. And the genie in tonight's story might just make you wish that you had never even found his lamp in the first place. I smell human. This is going to sound absolutely crazy, but the myth about genies and lamps granting people wishes is actually true. No, seriously. I know that it's true because... I found a lamp hanging from a tree a few miles from my home. I caught the glimmer of sunlight reflecting off of it while riding my bicycle, and I stopped to get a closer look at it. It was around eight feet up on a branch, and it clanked and rattled loudly in the breeze as it tapped against the tree. I was in pretty good shape at the time, so climbing the tree to get it wasn't that hard. I inspected the lamp, and it was every bit the way you would imagine a genie's lamp would appear, right down to the curved spout at the end and the brightly colored gems around the base. I don't remember rubbing it per se, but I suppose that holding it cradled under my arm as I slid back down the tree was good enough to wake the sleeping genie inside. This part wasn't anything like you'd expect if you've ever seen movies like Aladdin. No puff of brightly colored smoke, no wispy blue genie spouting wisecracks while simultaneously thanking me profusely for freeing him from his tiny golden prison. Instead, I was greeted by something that resembled an elderly man, with half of his face burnt off. He smelled like rotten stew sitting in a kettle for a month. His skin is sickly white, and his eye sockets completely void of anything resembling eyes. I stood there absolutely petrified as this frail being stumbled and limped towards me, dragging one foot on the ground that appeared to be twisted completely backwards. Ask. One question, he spoke in a robotic pattern. I thought for a moment about what I could or maybe what I should be asking him. The only thing that came to mind was, are you really a genie? It seemed like a stupid question to be asking. I mean, if he was only giving me one chance to ask him something, I probably should have asked him something else. He didn't speak but instead simply lowered and raised his head in a nodding fashion. I could hear the sound of bones popping with each motion, until his head came to rest in a slightly lower position than it had started in. He spoke. Make. One. Wish. I wanted to ask why I didn't get three wishes, or if I could really wish for anything I wanted, but... Then I remembered that he said I could only ask one question. If I could only make one wish, I needed it to be a good one. I thought about asking for a house, a new car, a beautiful girlfriend, to be someone famous like a movie star. But honestly, all of those things wouldn't matter if I had money and lots of it. But what sum of money would I need? I didn't want to ever run out of it, but I also didn't want to be greedy. I mean, what if that would have made him angry? So instead, I chose my wording very carefully. I said, I wish to be surrounded by money. There was no flash of light, no clap of his hands, no puff of smoke, just the sensation of gold coins landing at my feet and his robotic voice giving his last two spoken syllables to me. Granted. I kept my eyes affixed on the now two-foot-deep pile of gold coins surrounding me. I glanced up and the genie, along with the lamp, was gone. This was days ago. If you find this note, please hurry and dig. As I am writing this, I've completely lost the feeling in both my legs. I can feel the pressure of the coins breaking my ribs as I struggle for air. My left arm is completely buried and I can't feel it anymore. The coins will soon be over my head. Please, somebody help me. You can keep all of the coins. Just don't let me die here. <laughs> <laughs>